Question 3, energy and projectile motion. Jackie's brother Ernie is pushing a lawnmower with a force of 26 newtons at an angle of 34 degrees to the ground as shown below. So we've got this drawing that's been removed. So maybe we should just quickly scrub it out and draw our own one in here. Here we go. Um, so it's a lawnmower. Really simple, there's spinning blades under there and there's a person who's pushing it. And the force is applied of 26 newtons at an angle of 34 degrees. There we go, just as good as the real one I'm sure. Um, there's a web address if you do want to go check it out. Explain fully why not all of the 26 newton force exerted by Ernie is used to push the mower horizontally along the ground. Well, the number one reason is that um, he's applying the force uh, on an angle. There is a horizontal component and a vertical component. The horizontal component only is used to push the motor. So the vertical is um, kind of wasted, if you like. Yeah. Now, B. Calculate the power produced by Ernie when he accelerates the mower through a distance of 4 meters in 3 seconds. So we've got the time, 4 point, uh, or the distance, sorry, 4.0 meters. Decimals don't work too well with the stylus. Time given is 3.0 seconds. Um, we have to work out the power, which is the rate of energy converted over time, or also the work done over time. And we know that work is force times distance, so it's likely, since we've got a distance measurement there, that we're using that. And we're told with the forces. Now, it's the power produced by Ernie. So we don't care that it's on an angle. We just use the 26 newtons. Um, so the force equals 26 newtons. So it's 26. Let's go a different color because we're getting hard to see already. Uh, force times distance divided by time, 26 times 4.0 divided by the time of 3.0 seconds and that will equal 312 oops I've multiplied that too many times it's not 312 at all it is in fact 34.6 recurring so equals 30 4.7. Uh, if we're rounding to the correct number of decimal places, significant figures, everything's given to 2SF, so it should be 35. And the units for power is watts. Sorry, that's so messy, but 35 watts. C. Ernie. Uh, Jacob's son kicks a ball towards Ernie in the garden. This is going to be projectile motion, you can tell already. Um, and Ernie is 1.75 meters tall. Jacob kicks the ball with an initial velocity of 24 meters per second, as I can see from the diagram. At an angle of 36 degrees, also on the diagram, to the ground. Jacob is standing 35 meters away from Ernie. <coughs> I think this video actually appears, or this question gets answered at another place on the site. Um, with, will the ball hit Ernie or go over his head? That is the first question. So, in the arc, is it going to hit Ernie or go over his head? Um, and we need to know uh, the height um, that the ball will be at at this particular range, 35 meters. So we need to know the amount of time it takes. Oops, the amount of I've lost my no, I haven't. The amount of time it takes to cover this range. So the best thing we can do is find the initial horizontal velocity. Um, oh, okay. Look, it's it's even giving me the start here. It says in your, in your calculations start by showing that the horizontal component of the initial velocity of all is 19.4 meters per second. Um, horizontal, that's cos because it's the adjacent uh, edge. The horizontal edge is adjacent to the 36 degree angle. So 24 cosine of 36 degrees oops, is going to give us 19.4 meters per second. So that's a good start. Um, and then the next thing to do is to find that time. So we've got the distance, we've got the time. Velocity is distance over time. If we're trying to find the time, it's distance over velocity. And we can just plug those numbers there. 35 meters divided by the velocity of 
four meters per second will equal a relatively short one point eight zero four seconds. So that's the time that it takes to reach um, the distance away. Um, now we have to work out um, the the vertical height at that time. So uh, we want to know, I'm just going to change colour for the second calculation. That will make it easier for you to see. So we want to know the height or the distance from the ground at that time. Um, so vertically now we have to consider the vertical velocity which is going to be 24 sine 36 degrees because it's the opposite angle, opposite from the, the the angle that's listed. So 24 sine 36 degrees which equals 14.1 uh, 14.11 if we're going to uh, meters per second and it's a decimal not a number um, so we now know the initial velocity um, 14.11 we're trying to find the distance we know the time is uh, 1.8 seconds or 1.804 seconds we know the acceleration is negative because it's downwards with respect to the initial velocity negative 9.8 meters per second um, might be given as 9.81 but you can double check that is there an equation that links all of these things together d equals vrt plus half at squared perhaps vit plus half at squared yep that one works out nicely just going to zing sideways to plug those numbers in um, Initial velocity was 14.11 times by 1.8 uh, plus half times negative 9.8 times by uh, 1.8 squared. And that equals, I'm just going to come up here, that equals 9.522. Meters, and that means it's 9.522 meters off the ground, and that is pretty certain to clear Ernie, who is 1.75 meters tall. So you would say that um, over the top of all of this, uh, will the ball hit him and go over his head? Over head. There we go. Uh, now we've got a spider spinning a web in the garden, and a moth gets caught in the web. Uh, the web stretches downward by 0 0.65 meters when the moth is of mass 0 0.003 kilograms is caught and a graph of the force against extension is shown below. Um, D. Explain why the formula work equals force times distance cannot be used to calculate the elastic potential energy stored when your moth gets caught in it. Um, the explanation should include an in a statement of what should be used to calculate this energy. Well, um, the energy stored, work is force times distance, remember, so the energy done uh, by, the, um, by the stretchy spring or elastic, um, whatever you call it in this case, stored elastic potential energy, is going to be the area under the graph. So we can't use work as force times distance because that would give us a square, which is actually uh, wrong in this case. So two reasons, um, force times distance gives us, um, sorry I was interrupted by a phone call so I paused, <clears throat> the, uh, as I was saying there are two reasons, one is the force is not constant, so that's the main reason, non-constant force means as the force changes the extension changes and we don't get a consistent one force that we could use, so force is not constant, <clears throat> the second one is um, because it's dealing with the area under the graph, we're only interested in um, half of the force times the distance, which is also, um, interestingly, the area of the triangle. And so this is just a way of explaining it, not the square. Okay, but the main thing is the force is not constant, so you can't apply it in there. And E, calculate the elastic potential energy stored in the web when the moth is caught in the web. So as, as I said before, it's half force times distance, we have to go back up and get those values, 
Uh, web is stretched downwards by 0.65 meters when a moth of mass 0 0.003 kilograms. Let's see if I remember those. Um, half 0 0.003 kilograms, but times by gravity, force due to gravity, to give us the actual force, times by the distance was, I think, 0 0.065 meters. 0, 0, 0.065? Just 0, 0.065. That's 6.5 centimeters. 0, 0.065. Plug those numbers into a formula and out comes the answer of 0 0.0009555 or 9.5 times 10 to the minus 1234. And what do we store? This is the elastic potential energy, so we're dealing with energy units of joules. That's the answer there. Thank you.